Hello, everyone. I want to talk to you about the American Revolution. The American Revolution is part of the age of enlightenment. And so we're sort of continuing what we've been talking about in the Age of Enlightenment. But it is also part of something that we call the Age of Revolution. In fact, it is the first stage. So let me clean things up here so we can move on. Again, we're talking about the American Revolution, and we're going to start talking about things that brought about the American Revolution. The first thing you need to know about is this idea right here called mercantilism. And we're going to work for a while off of these mind maps because they'll probably help you organize everything that you need to know and get it into your mind. So... American Revolution, our first, our, our first thing we're going to talk about is something called, called uh, mercantilism. And oh, the things that we're going to really look at as we talk about mercantilism are colonies, raw materials, markets, and this idea of balance of trade. Mercantilism is an economic idea. And so if you look at some of the other words spread around there, you're going to see some of the words associated with it. But wealth and, and production and government and colonies and import and export and materials, all of those are parts of E economy. Economy is how we produce things and we buy things and we sell things. We get the things that we need to live. It's important to know that by the 1650s, Britain has begun to, to put into practice this idea of mercantilism. And it's based on the idea that colonies exist in order to generate wealth. Generate means make wealth. For whom? The mother country. And who's the mother country here? That's going to be England. Mercantilism is built on the idea of trade. So here we're going to take a look at two countries and we're going to look at their issue of trade. So we have Spain and what is Spain doing? Spain is sending is sending sugar out of Spain to France. And the value of that sugar is let's say 500 million dollars. At the same time, France is sending th two things to Spain. It's sending cloth, that's it here, and that's 300 million dollars, and then it's going to send some gold and silver, and that's 200 million dollars. So here we add these up, 200 and 300 is 500, and we have 500 over here, so we bring them together and they cancel each other out. Now that would be nice, but it's really not that way in real life.
Now, because usually one country, let's use Spain again, sends perhaps less to another country that sends more. Five hundred, seven hundred. Who who exported the most? England did. So here we have a two hundred million pound balance of trade in favor of England. In mercantilism, the most important thing is what was called the balance of trade. That was who made more money exporting. So, to have a favorable, that's what you're looking for, a favorable balance of trade, you have to have more exports and fewer imports. You export more. I, I export from my country a thousand pounds worth of goods, and I only import 400 pounds worth of goods. That's a really favorable balance of trade. Because what I do is I take the 1,000, which is the exports, and I subtract the 400 from it, and what do I get? I get 600. That means I made 600 pound, million pounds on my exports. But making a brilliant profit like that was very hard to do. So the European countries add to the mix of just trading amongst themselves the idea of having colonies. And colonies are supposed to help them with their balance of trade. And here's how it works. The colony provides raw materials to the mother country. And the mother country takes those raw materials and turns them into goods, pans, bars of soap kitchen utensils, and it ships them back to its colony and sells them there. But there's a little more to it than just shipping things back and forth. The colonies here, oh, a little move there we didn't want. The colonies here provide things at low prices. That means when they send this to England, they only get a few pounds. The English then turn that around and make manufactured goods and they ship them back at high prices and they charge lots of money for what they do. So, two, four. Who's making money? England. Let's look at this in even more detail. Okay, here's our colony. Let's make it Pennsylvania. And it's going to provide timber. That's wood. The timber crosses the Atlantic and goes to England. In England, that timber, that wood, gets turned into furniture. 
that furniture makes its way back to the colonies. The timber was cheap. The colonists got practically nothing for it. But when that wood turns around and comes right back to where it left as furniture, it's very expensive. So the colonists end up buying their own wood back for four times the price they sold it for. That is how colonies worked with their mother country in the mercantile system to make the mother country rich. So what do we have making up this mercantile system? First, we have colonies. Second, we have raw materials. Third, we have manufacturers. That's the process of taking that raw material, like the timber we were talking about, and turning it into furniture. And fourth, we have markets. Those are the places you take what you've made and you sell it. So, we have the colonies, we have the raw materials, we have the manufacturing process here, and we have markets. And all of these go together to make a functional mercantile system. Perhaps you noticed in this system there are losers and there are winners. The loser is the colony, and the winner is the mother country. Take a moment, hit pause, and study this political cartoon. Look at the four figures, identify what they are, then look at their trays, and identify what's on their trays, and who are they serving it to. All right, let's ask ourselves three basic questions about this. Question number one, where are they? Question number two, who is the mother country? And question number three, what's the role of the colonies? What's their job? And if you feel comfortable answering those questions, you got a basic understanding of how the system operated in which England, or eventually Britain as it came to be called, had colonies in the United in, 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 the, in the New World, and these colonies were part of the English mercantilist system. To make the mercantilist system work, the English government controlled how trade took place. And here we have a little map with some arrows on it, and it's going to show you exactly how the law said that trade had to take place. So you can see the green over here on the left-hand side. That's the American colonies. And the green arrows show what the American colonies are allowed to ship out of the colonies, to export. And notice that these are basically raw materials. 
And now if you look at the red lines, this is what England is allowed to ship out. So to the colonies, it's shipping things like tea and spices and furniture and cloth and tools. And then it's shipping all types of iron products down to, to Africa. And in Africa, it's exchanging those. And see the yellow arrow now? And the yellow arrow is what it gets in exchange, gets in exchange for the iron products that it's selling off in Africa. And it gets slaves, and it gets some gold. And most of those slaves come across the Atlantic. And at first, they go down here into the West Indies, where Britain has uh, sugar plantations. And that's where they go. But eventually, the slaves will also come to the 13 colonies. And then, of course, the slaves are bought there for a huge profit. And then the ships pick up more of these cheap raw goods and bring them back to England. And the whole process continues. And this process came to be called the triangular trade. And the triangular trade was kept in business by a series of laws that were called the Navigation Acts. So let's summarize. Mercantilism is, is a, an economic policy. It's about wealth, because wealth is power. And the key to getting wealth is to export more than you import. European countries competed to do this, and one of the very important things in this process was having colonies. And colonies provide the raw materials. And that's what the colonies' role is, raw materials. It is not allowed to import anything into the colony for the colonists to use except what comes from its mother country. And so it becomes a market for exports from the mother country, and that creates a favorable balance of trade for the mother country, in this case, England.